the most talked about stances in Qigong is the horse stance. And interestingly enough, there are several different styles of horse stance that you could do. Um, you have a narrow horse stance where your feet are about shoulder width, and then you have a wide horse stance where your feet are about twice your shoulder width. So with a narrow horse stance, your feet are parallel with each other, and specifically the outsides of your feet are parallel with each other, such that the weight of your upper body naturally drops down your torso and drops directly through your thighs, through your knees, and into your feet. It's really balanced, it's really stable, and uh, it really helps the center alignment of the body. Great position to hold your, your hand poses or to just do standing qigong for a really long period of time. In this particular pose, the knees are bent, body's relaxed, and, but you're not uh, straining, the knees aren't super, uh, bent super, super deep. So you can hold a position for a really, really long time. And uh, some Qigong practitioners will actually hold this kind of horse stance with you know, one meditative pose or any kind of pose where you're trying to activate your dantians for a really long time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I mean, you could actually hold for quite, uh, quite some time, especially because it's fairly relaxed. Now, if you want to look at, uh, we have other horse stances as well. So these are wider horse stances where the feet are uh, at least twice shoulder width, twice your actual shoulder width. And the best way to get into that is if we start in a feet together position and you open up your toes, rise up on the balls of your feet, or open up the heels, right? Then open up the toes again, and then naturally straighten out the feet. You'll find that if you, uh, when you naturally straighten out the feet, I'm just going to lift my pant legs up here, it looks like the toes uh, are going slightly out, and it's true. What, what's happening is the insides of my feet are parallel. The insides of the feet are parallel. Sometimes you might feel that your toes are out a little bit further. That's actually okay in terms of the feet position. I try to make it so the insides are parallel just so, you're, so you, you have a certain sense of stability. Now, the focus of this horse stance is to push the knees out, okay? When you push the knees out, rock the pelvis board, you have a lot of energy that shoots outward towards the knees, so there's a lot more focus on the outside of the legs and the thighs. Now, consequently, if I turn my feet so the outsides of the feet are parallel, it completely changes the position, right? And now, this is called a knee forward horse stance. So I'm still pretty wide, I'm still about twice shoulder width, but all the force is on the top of the thighs instead. Both of these positions are, are quite effective to hold, uh, to hold your postures in or your Dantian postures, but they, they have different results. And uh, you know, with the, with the toe out and the knees out, there's more focus on the outsides of the leg, but it's a, very, it's a particularly stable position. It's a very easy position to find your balance in. So I think that, that that's where the, the advantage comes from the toes out position. With the toes in, the, uh, the nice advantage here is that you can do some of your squatting motions a little bit easier, or your, your deep bends and the rises a little bit easier. So it just has a, a, a slightly different focus. But it's a, just a good idea to understand when you're getting into a horse stance, which one you're doing and what results you're looking for. So that's just a little bit of information. I uh, hope that helps.